You know what the secret is to impressing your parents? Make videos about a 22 year old game in your free time. One dark day in July 2015, Holly Longdale, then producer of EverQuest said, what we don't want to do is instant raids, which is what casuals want us to do because they want to fight Nagafen. Casuals shouldn't be allowed to fight Nagafen. That diminishes the achievement of others. That's part of the challenge. You have to be better than the other guy. You have to be more strategic than the other guy. Before I get into this, there's some background needed. EverQuest was a game that for years only had open world raids. These raids relied on long timers, seven days in most cases with huge six hour and 14 hour windows, meaning you could be there on the seventh day waiting for a spawn for half a day or more, potentially with other guilds, probably with other guilds. This all came to a head in progression servers, notably the Ragefire progression server, which is when that comment was made. This was when a server that is designed in a lot of ways to progress through content, meaning you don't have years to go through all of Classic. You have a month, two months, three months, I believe with Ragefire, it may have been a longer time period at that time. I think there was a, it was a voting with Ragefire. If I will, I will put it up here when I figure out what it was, but it was, it was definitely a longer time period than what they're currently doing, which is one month for a classic in the newest server, two months for non-level cap raising exp expansions, and three months for level cap expansions. So it's, it's definitely something that is different than it used to be. It's also important to point out that this changed early on in EverQuest history, with most raids becoming instants around the end of Planes of Power, Plane of Time specifically, and continuing to grow more and more instants through subsequent expansions. Gates of Discord and Omens of War were two of the main expansions that, like the more significant raids, were all instants. And then as you get to modern day EverQuest, pretty much everything is an instance raid. But going back to the open world issue and the comment made by Holly Longdale, then producer of EverQuest, about the really outthinking your opponents or other raid guilds, as it were. I was part of many of these DPS races, um, spawn camping, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we won a handful. We lost many more. Usually the raid using that term lightly at the end of these long waiting sessions with competitive guilds had was had no real threat to it. It was a DPS race with 100 plus people trying to kill a target meant for 72 or less, with each going full 100% DPS, trying to strategically get the other guild to do more of the traditional things like tanking and healing. What it did was it created a different type of raid encounter where the raid encounter itself was not the challenge. The challenge was just having a higher total DPS meter than the other guilds. Is there some fun and achievement that? Yes, of course, it's competitiveness. There's always gonna be of some fun in that, especially when you win. Even if you win one out of 10, there is definitely a lot of fun and excitement and get, finally getting and, and breaking through. Is there a lot of aggravation? Also, yes, there is so much aggravation when you spend so much of your precious time sitting and waiting for a 20 to 30 second encounter, maybe if you're lucky two minutes and then it's just done for seven more days. When I heard this comment from the producer of EverQuest, I first had to get over my initial shock of someone in such a leadership role openly disparaging a group of players in their own game using terminology more akin to what players use, not the producer of an MMO. I thought about it in two different ways. One, Holly was elevating scarcity about and time investment over challenge when she considered killing Nagafen an achievement. Go back to the example before of raid bosses just being steamrolled by double or triple the number of raiders. There was no challenge to it. It's just a DPS race 
and making sure your raiders were still awake. Number two, at what point does scarcity go from achievement to irritation? How much time investment is necessary to be considered eligible for raid content? It's important to note that it's, it's not necessarily that you are not more skilled than the other guild, but perhaps when you are raiding, you bring 20 people and they bring 30 and they're going to win. So that doesn't mean that they're more skilled or have better gear or have spent more time in the game. It just literally means they got more people. Or in, a, in an area where you have three different guilds vying for the thing, you just kind of get a lucky break with how the DPS works out. Or maybe you get a slight edge because part of the raid gets wiped out by something. Or more likely what's going to happen, which is very unfortunate, is there will be trains of other mobs into the raid area from other guilds, from the guilds you're going against, right before the pop, right as the pop that will basically take out part of your raid crew. And it just, it creates this environment for griefing of raiders. Now you can say, hey, well then you just need to have backup that's able to, to block any trains that are happening. You need to have people watching for trains. But is that really what you're wanting to do? Is that in an MMO that's, a, that's about social and, and grouping and things like that? Is that what you're looking for? Is that the kind of achievement you're looking for? Who can be less of a dick or, or more prepared for being a dick? I mean, that for me was not what I was looking for. I had been doing that in previous servers before. I had gone through that whole thing. It was not something I was looking for in my late 20s. At that point, I was ready to just enjoy the game and enjoy the content of the game. The content as it was meant to be enjoyed by the original creators of the game. Well. It turns out we didn't have to spend much time ruminating over those points because the Finigil Time Lock Progression Server launched at the end of the same year on December 9th, 2015. With that server came Agents of Change, which to me were the single most important advent for the future of EverQuest progression servers. What these did was they kept the long lockouts on content, seven days, but set a real time for players to come and enjoy raid content. You could actually schedule a raid start and start at that time, not sit around for hours hoping for something to spawn. More focus was on the strategy involved in getting the raid target down with your limited non-Zerg raid as Agent chains were capped at 72, raids would later shrink to 52. So now, now the actual a challenge and achievement in the content was the content created by the EverQuest developers. Open world targets remained, allowing the truly hardcore to push for both their AOC target and their open world target. The challenge of raiding became the raid target itself, not the limits of one's sleep and work schedules. There are times I may wax nostalgic about the competitor raid scene and DPS races. I have to admit DPS races were fun in certain situations. But to me, the AOC forever changed EverQuest rating for the better. In the past decade, many Kickstarter MMOs have looked to EverQuest and older games like Ultima Online, DAOC, Shadowbane, and even Classic WoW for inspiration. I think the comments by Holly Longdale and the subsequent U-turn just months later and the enduring success of Agents of Chains and EverQuest could be a lesson to these new MMOs about the importance of modernizing MMOs in considering what they consider achievement and what they consider a time sink. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe somewhere down. I'm gonna get it right eventually down there, maybe up here somewhere, I don't know. There's also probably a video somewhere here that you might also enjoy. Thank you and have a wonderful day.